RGB! I think the sound works. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this is not the kind of video I wanted to make. <laughs> now when I go to work and I see ducks, this is what I'm gonna think of. Look, I'm an archive of terrible YouTube videos. That's all my brain is. The sad part is I like this kind of stuff. <laughs> Is this my life now? This is life now. Existence is pain. I got... I got a new computer, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> How you doing? We got Grateful 42 over today. Look what we got. Well, what? Well, look what a grateful has. <laughs> this case is ridiculous. Just, just look at it. Drive bays, probably EATX in there, and it's got a boot. <laughs> yeah. and it has even more drives in it, and a second power supply. This case is ridiculous. I like it. That makes me sad. Eh. That makes me happy. Anyhow, I figured you guys would be interested in this. Since we haven't been doing as many computer videos lately, it's time we bring out the big guns. It's, uh, it's Threadripper time. It's definitely Threadripper time. <laughs> it's an ASRock X99 Tai Chi board. It's got a Threadripper 1950X in it, 16 core. 3.4 gigahertz. 32 gigs of brand new RGB G skill RAM. Here's the power supply. Yeah. Here we go. Which is a nice Corsair RM850X. This is a this is a series of Corsair power supplies. It's actually pretty decent, and it's not huge either. It's nice, and small, and it's modular and everything. Let me get a light on the situation there. That's better. Now you can really see it. So far. All we have is a three and a half inch SSD. <laughs> When's the last time you've seen one of those? <laughs> and, of course, a one terabyte hard drive in there. And Noctua cooler, which is a really nice cooler. It's whisper quiet. Um, we're using a 750 Ti because, yes. It is my spare graphics card. It's good for putting pixels on the screen. Exactly. That's a pretty good for a spare graphics card. <laughs> but what's going in here? Your Vegas 64? Yeah. The yeah, Vegas 64 will be going in here eventually. But for now, we just needed to display the screen. So we're using that. And Staples failed us. So we've gone Fujitsu. <laughs> so we're plugging. So we have an old clunker like this plug into a beast like this. It's fantastic. I love it. Same with the monitor. <laughs> it's silly. So, what are we going to do? Uh, make sure this thing works and is configured right. Pretty much. And we have, and to do that, we have the cutest little flash drive ever. I lose that thing all the time. It's just, it's an 8 gig, and I have it configured to be a Hiren's boot CD. It just, it works. <laughs> and it will do its job today. So let me put that back in there. And this will allow us to take a look. Oh, wrong keyboard. <laughs> this allows us to take a look I at the... Uh, remove the imposter. <laughs> this allows us to take a look at the machine. So, as you can see, we have the RAM in quad channel mode, just because that's the way. There's four sticks of RAM, so there you go. Oh, so right now it is. Oh, it is running in quad. Yeah. So that's probably all. That's probably all four sticks running off one of the dies. Something like that. Okay. So I don't uh, know. We'll see. I don't know if we should change that. 
I'm not an expert in the workstation hardware because I don't mess with it very much, but learning as we go along. <laughs> so, what else we got? So it's a pretty typical ASRock BIOS. It's similar to the ones that are on my like low-end Ryzen boards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Virtualization support, you definitely want that on. You definitely want that on. Yeah, this my I I purchased this from a friend. He had it configured to do something really particular and he didn't want anything else disturbing it. Yeah, so he probably shut everything off. He, yeah. Suspend to RAM. What else we got in here? Advanced mode. Not advanced mode, just advanced mode. <laughs> Advance. Ed Bats. RGB LED. RGB. You can oh, turn, yeah, turn turn the LED, LED controller on. It has LED on that gear on the on the motherboard. Oh yeah, I don't know which LED controller that is. I don't know. They're all off. Let's turn them all on. Random. Gross. Random. <laughs> Random. Random. We'll see what that does. <laughs> Save and exit. Make it restart now. See what it does. We got more to go through. Uh, CPU temperature is about 66. Wow. Which is a little hot, but I don't know how hot these run. I have no idea. It's probably good enough for now. Uh, although it's a lot higher than the motherboard temperature. So yeah. I don't know if this needs paste or what, but... Yeah. Power supply looks good. Looks like it's all intolerance there. It better be. It's brand freaking new. Yeah, really. Nobody put a password on here, which is good. Yeah. The boot order. Oh, can they even see the SSD right now? Uh, doesn't appear to see it. That's interesting. Yeah, it doesn't see it. Hmm. Weird. All right, we'll poke around with that then. Let's look at the lights. It's supposed to have RGB on that gear. This gear right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how to turn that on. All right. You know what? Let's boot Mini XP on it. <laughs> Just for the heck of it. Gross. <laughs> it definitely don't won't run that. And I know there's a way to make it work, probably, but I'm not going to try it. The three-finger salute is not working. Makes me sad. It's not working? The three finger salute. Oh. Okay, we're back and we're going to try Kubuntu this time. Is this USB 3? I don't know. One thing that we're going to do is plug in the Ethernet. There we go. Kubuntu. This has kernel 4.15 in it, so it should work. Yee. Ain't she a beaut? <laughs> We have desktop. Look at that. No mouse, though. Oh, I need to oh. turn it on. Did you still have the dongle plugged in? Yeah. Oh. You sure? Sad. 
Okay. Are you sure? Oh, it's right there. I see it. Okay. Yeah. Is it plugged in all the way? No. <laughs> well, that, that'll do it. Now the audience is going to call me an idiot because yeah. I am. Maybe that's why the keyboard wasn't working. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a desktop, so let's use Linux here to examine the system. I guess not. That keyboard's dead. <laughs> Type in LSPCI, and we will get a wall of text. Yeah, that's a nice wall of text. Look at all the AMD stuff in there. Oh, my mm. goodness. 300 series chipset PCIe ports. What kind of ether Ethernet does it have? I did see it has dual NICs in the back. It looks like it's oh, it's it's in one of the rare AMD boards that has Intel um, Ethernet in it, which is really good stable Ethernet. So that's really nice. This is a good board. Uh, these X three ninety nine uh, Tai Chi's are pretty well regarded. Now the question is, does it see the SSD or not? Is so. that plugged in all the way? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard to not plug in a SATA cable all the way. <laughs> no one will ever trust you with a cable again. Nope. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're not getting that SSD. So Interesting. We need to do some investigation, I think. So you want to know how much of an idiot I am? <laughs> I plugged in the red SATA cable. Grateful plugged in the black side of cable. There was some, I didn't realize there that. was some miscommunication <laughs> between which cable was being plugged this in. This is a horrible mix up and it will be remembered for years. <laughs> so uh, I know we're not professionals, but this is still pretty bad. Yeah. We're not on top of our game. It's been too long. Ugh. Rip. Now that we know how to SSD correctly. Do we? We have oh. the OCZ Vertex, which has a Windows install on it, it looks like. So I'm thinking we should erase that, right? This drive was wiped. Not very well, apparently. This, this drive was wiped by my friend. He hates why does it, Why does it say finished? I don't know. Just delete everything. I'm going to give it a new partition table. Bye-bye. There we go. All right. Good enough, because we're not throwing it away. There. Now it's completely clean. Oof. Yeah, I, I think someone forgot to erase their SSD. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wiped it. He was pretty adamant he wiped everything he gave me. Well, maybe it was corrupted. I have no idea. Maybe. That, I don't know. That, that partition table says otherwise. Okay. But new partition table, new days, mm -hmm. new windows mm -hmm. installed in the future, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Let me turn the sound on. And plug the sound in, too. <laughs> yeah, see, we have a problem today, plugging things in. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at um, K-Info Center. This will give us a good idea of what's in this computer. It's nice and organized. So we're running Kubuntu 18.04 on a... So this is 16 core, 32 thread. Yeah. You've Now you're playing with power. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I, I, was offered, I was offered it for a deal, and I couldn't refuse. So it's mine now. Hey, I mean, <laughs> why complain, right? Mm -hmm. Like, right after I got this set up... <laughs> Yeah, that's silly. I like it. Oh, that's so many processors. Right after I got this from my friend, Newegg, new, one of the Newegg's deal of the day was this processor for $500, and I got the whole setup for about that. So it's using the open source Novu driver for yeah. uh, NVIDIA right now, but what else we got? There's case this guard. Mm. <laughs> look, oh look at all that. <laughs> I have I 
have a <laughs> rainbow of, of processors. <laughs> oh boy. What happens when you maximize the window? Oh, it looks organized now. That's boring. <laughs> That's amazing. That's incredible. Okay, so it looks like the quad channel configuration for this is what you want, despite what my thoughts were before, just because I've never really messed with the workstation stuff. So what we have here is correct. If we were to put this in dual channel mode, it would cut the memory throughput in half. So when you're working with workstation hardware, try to get the most memory bandwidth you can is the idea here. Even though it's kind of weird to me to use single sticks for that, I guess it makes sense in the end because it's still four sticks of RAM. Anyway, yeah, that was just an update on the memory configuration. You do want quad channel for these. This, this platform is basically built for it. So for Threadripper, use quad channel. Okay, so this is Threadripper, right? What is this, a workstation? We should do some work on it. So how about video conversion? Yay. Since we don't really have a very high-end GPU in here, we can't really do the gaming benchmarks, we can't do the GPU <laughs> stuff. So we're going to use Handbrake and Big Buck Bunny in this terrifying picture here. This video disturbs me to my core. <laughs> yeah. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, 4K 60 frames per second and converting that down to uh, 1080p 30 at a pretty high quality. It's just a preset. So we're just going to see what happens here. Let's see what how long it takes and how much we can push this GPU. CPU. Or CPU, rather. So now it's encoding. Ooh. The fans are picking up a little bit. You can hear that, I'm sure. Well, maybe not, because it's Noctua. That graph is a Technicolor hellscape, and I love it. <laughs> You can see it slowly peaks higher in performance. And it's only going to take 10 minutes mm -hmm. for this particular clip to encode. And this is with a CPU, mind you. This is the, these are the kind of times I see out of GPUs normally. So that's kind of impressive. Is this thing even getting warm? Oh, the middle of it's getting a little warm. Those heat pipes are working. Yep. That's crazy. So that's your amount of time there. Normal big buck bunny. It's saving it as an M4V file, which is sort of Apple-y, but it's technically MP4. Check that out. That's impressive. That's really impressive. Especially with the 32 threads available. What are you going to do with 32 threads? Play Dwarf Fortress, probably. <laughs> I'll... Why not? Why don't I'll you? I'll why definitely don't... find a use. But uh, like I said, even though I I know I really didn't need this, the the price offered I couldn't refuse. You so, were made an offer you couldn't refuse. Basically, <laughs> I'm probably gonna host some game servers on it too. That would work. Considering the amount of horsepower you have to work with. Yeah. It's been well, a long time since I played Gary's Mod. That's what you should use a Threadripper for, to play Gary's Mod. <laughs> and of course, the most powerful game in the world, DOSBox. <laughs> I think I have over 800 hours in Gary's Mod. Oh, wow. This is not taking very long. This is silly. No, it's not. This is like stupidly powerful. And this is first generation Threadripper. Imagine how Threadripper 3 is going to be this year. 2 is basically a revision of this, but 3 has the newer dies on it. Same with Ryzen, um, the third generation Ryzen, which I might be getting this year sometime. Ooh. I think the 3700 has 12 cores in it? I have no idea. And that's on the consumer chipset. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. So, you definitely got a deal. I would say you definitely got a deal. It can hold its own without much of a problem. The only thing it's doing is just revving the fans a little bit, and that's it. Yeah. Rest of the time, it's just like, beep, bop, beep, boop. <laughs> it's, it's a computer. 
And it makes noises. And it doesn't make that much noise, though. Yeah. Not a whole lot. The, the graphics card I'm going to throw into this thing is going to be louder than that CPU fan setup. Yeah, literally the loudest thing in this is going to be the Vegas 64 that would go right here and mm. cover up all this beautiful gear, steampunkish decal artwork stuff. Yeah. And right now we just have Stubby. <laughs> yeah. It did, it did okay in my sister's computer. They're not bad cards. I used one for a very long time, and I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. I guess this is where we end things, because there's not much else to show, really, because yeah. we don't have a Windows install for this yet. That 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 might need an explanation. <laughs> I just didn't pick one up yet. <laughs> well, I didn't expect. There. I, I ordered this RAM and power supply a day ago. It, oh wow! It shipped from New Jersey, and I was like, "Oh, all right." <laughs> it just it showed up really fast. And then uh, today, here we are. Playing with it, yes. So and and coding, <laughs> coding <Big> video. <laughs> it's already in the time that we've dawdled around. It's already at fifty percent. Like basically, that's, that's great. Look at that graph again. Look at that Technicolor hellscape. Look at it doing so much work. <laughs> this is a modern art masterpiece. I love it. Ugh. It looks like a plotter lost the plot. <laughs> like honestly. But yeah, Threadripper. This is probably what it's best at is the CPU intensive workloads. So you could do a whole you could leave a whole bunch of crap running in the background. You could encode videos, you could run virtual machines. Yeah, that was the one thing my friend suggested, Rick, all you gotta do is just give four cores to two VMs and have your sisters just run off VMs. And you wouldn't even notice. One computer, three users. Right. It would be basically. like another Linus experiment. Oh, God. <laughs> so this is Grateful 42's new Threadripper build. And an absolute monstrosity of a case with the RGB RAM. Ooh, fancy. Don't Ooh. judge me. It was on sale. <laughs> <laughs> You must suffer through the indignant, the, the um, I don't even know what the word, right word is for it, the indecency. Right. <laughs> oh, shoot, the neon. We didn't turn on the neon. Oh, yeah, we need oh, to turn the neon turn on. Neon. So. That's why, that's why it had, that's why this was on there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, this switch. So this plugs into that little box we that's were looking at. That's why it had the Molex. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That, and it's just a little on-off switch. Yeah. So we were. Um, I was. I got confused. I was like, "What's this for?" And then, in the front of the computer here, I noticed this box. So that plugs into this box, which turns on the neon. Just basically the uh, DC to DC converter for the neon stuff. So we'll plug that in, and we'll show you what it looks like before we go. Okay, our video encode is done. So let's see if it actually worked. Uh, where did it actually put it? Videos, I think? Yeah. It appears to have worked. Look at that. Wow. Does it actually look decent? Yeah. Yep. So, very easily useful as a video workstation. But we knew that already. And it was the best test we could do at the yeah, time. Yeah, so. it's hard to do benchmarks when you don't really have a permanent OS installed at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure eventually we'll come back to this build, but this is basically a first introduction to it. Yeah. And One thing, and we have plugged in the cathode tubes in the front. This box, what I, what I think this box is, is a ballast. Yes. So... That will go to the tubes in the front. There's a switch on this bracket here. When I turn it on... Tubes. Ah, look at that. So we got green on the front. You can match it with the green on the RAM, I guess. Yeah. If that's con How do you configure that? It's an option somewhere, probably. Maybe yeah. there's a driver? It might be. It's either a driver. Yeah, I think it's a driver. It's either a driver or it's in the BIOS. Cool. So you got cathode tubes. You got RGB RAM. All you need now is a plexiglass uh, side panel that will break if you just if you look at it the wrong way. Right. <laughs> I like the glass panels. Though. I do too. Yeah, they look really nice. I didn't I didn't think about doing a video about it, but I just did move all of my sister's guts 
from her computer from a 2003 case into a modern case and it has a really nice tempered glass side panel. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty sleek. That's some nice stuff. She was super excited and then immediately covered it in stickers. <laughs> <laughs> stickers everywhere. Well, this is the new beast. I'm sure we I ran out of batteries. I don't know what's going on. This is a really big computer. <laughs> How happy are you? I'm happy. Very happy. And, oh yeah, and this is the best slot blank in the world. Isn't that a quaint bit of antiquity there? <laughs> It'd only be better if I had, like, a five and a quarter floppy to put there. The sad part is I have floppies. <laughs> I don't have any dead drives, though. We can put a dead drive in there. <laughs> right. That'd be stupid. It'd be hilarious. But anyway, this is the Threadripper build, and I think what I was saying before my camera died was that uh, we'll probably be seeing more of this build in the future once it's in a more permanent state of being. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that is the end of the video. So, if you want to reach me on social media, you can check the Twitter and Reddit down below, and you can also join our Discord community with the link down below as well. I'm on there now. Yes, Grateful's on there, so you can yammer with him and, an <laughs> and annoy him. <laughs> so, there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this adventure, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao. Peace.